Hello, nice humans. How's everybody doing? Does everybody else have a little bit of sunshine outside or is it just, just here? We'll get started in just a bit when a few more people show up. But welcome if you have not been here before and welcome back if you have. Um, I'm Georgia, um, if you didn't know. Uh, and we're going to be doing some chemistry things today to do with alcohols. So the way these usually work is that um, we run through some exam questions. So I read them, maybe give like some hints if I think something's going to be particularly difficult. Um, and then you guys have a go. I give you a little bit of time. Uh, and then once you had sort of like a good length of time, I sort of walk you through the question and then you get some time to sort of ask me any questions or tell me if you're confused, uh, things like that. So that's that's the plan. Um, and I'll sort of start slowly to wait for a few more people to sort of drop in. Um, uh, and hello. Hi, Charlotte. Hello, Faith. Hello. Is that Milos? Am I saying that right? Please help if I'm not, uh, I would appreciate that. Uh, hi, Resurrection Stone and Namata and Naomi. And is that, is that you, Jalaj? <laughs> can, I, can I tell just by the capital letters? Mm. Hi, Jasmine. Good afternoon, Artin. Um, all right, let's get started slowly-ish. Um, yes, it is. I should have known from the capital letters. Um, Okay, can we all see the thing that says alcohols and the nice happy looking barrel? Uh, is that all showing up okay? Hello, Master Ugwe. Yes, thank you, Amalia. Yeah, okay, cool. So as usual, if you didn't know or you're not already subscribed, um, at the end of these, we seem to always give a coupon for our platform. Um, and sort of like, before I do that, I will show you the platform. Um, so you get a discount for the platform that we sort of have lots more of stuff like this where we do lots of live teaching and things and bits and bobs. Which exam board is it? So this, we sort of, I specifically picked questions from AQA, OCR and edXL. Um, so there's a range for that, but there are lots of people from different exam boards that pop in. Most of it's fine. And I, I try to sort of say when something's very exam board specific, but there's not, not really anything like that. Um, this is so alcohols as a topic is, um, is is year one, is year 12 stuff. So in general, it's. Um, yeah. Cool. And then we also have a poll running. I don't know if it's run now or if it's going to run. Uh, but essentially in a week, we plan to do one on NMR, which is a year 13 topic uh, because we had some requests to do it, but there aren't that many year 13 studying. So we're wondering what you guys think about whether we should do it as a lesson. So year 12s can come along and sort of learn about NMR or if there are enough people that sort of already know NMR to do sort of something more like this or it's exam question. So please help us out um, and answer that poll so we can figure out what the best thing to do is for you guys. Um, all right, getting started. So we'll start with some multiple choice things um, and getting lots of do it as a lesson. Please answer. Answer the poll and then it will be a fair test, but thank you for dropping it in the chat as well. And nice and short. Which of the following is a tertiary alcohol? So we've got three methyl butan two ol, we've got two methyl butan two ol, we've got two methyl butan one ol, and two two dimethyl propan one ol. Um, so have a have a look for me. Uh, you got about a minute. Got an assessment to carry out that one of the bullet points suggests why we're not letting you use um, sodium to test for alcohols. Why? Suggest why we're not. Um, so huh, you tell me why might you not? Why might you not be allowed to use sodium? Or why? Why in a lab are you ever not allowed to do something? It is. Yeah. So like, yeah, it's always going to be a safety thing. So when you drop, um, I'll answer, I'll answer this. <laughs> okay. 
Why not? All right. I'm going to write an alcohol down. So it's just going to be methanol and sodium. Does anyone know what reaction would take place? So this is, so somebody just asked me why, why would they not be allowed to use sodium in, in ethanol? It said methanol. Okay, fine. Fine. I'll draw another CH. What would my product be? Uh, not NaOH, because then you would end up with a carbocation and that would be like crazy unstable. So not NaOH, but we do have some kind of substitution. Namrat is closest. So we get, um, we just get the substitution of the hydrogen instead. And then the web class is cancelled today. Yes, yes, it is. Um, and then what? what? What's the other product likely to be? Not NAH. My face is covering it. Ah, oh, not again. <laughs> Damn, my face. It's always in the way. Okay, sorry guys. Apologies. This is what it says. And uh, is it Tillini or Thillini or something else that I've not pronounced? Uh, yeah, it's H2. So um, there's two reasons why it's a bad idea to do this in a normal lab. First of all, this is probably going to be aqueous. So we've also got a reaction with water possible in there. Um, so reactions with sodium are extremely exothermic. So not only do we have an exothermic reaction? But we have, um, no, that's not balanced, but I'm not gonna balance it because this is not the subject of today. This is just a random random question. Um, we have an exothermic reaction and we have a gas being released. So you have a fast reaction and a gas releasing. What's, what is that likely to look like? Very exothermic and a gas releasing. Any ideas? Not a big explosion, um, but sort of a little explosion, a little a baby explosion. So you've got loads of heat releasing and, uh, and a load of gas uh, and hydrogen gas is, is flammable at a high enough temperature. So basically it's just uh, not what you want. So not in a, not in a school lab. Uh, how is this related to the question? It's not. Somebody asked me why, why you, why their teacher said that they couldn't do that in the lab. Um, somebody asked me. So that is that is why. So that's sort of a reasonable bit, reasonable bit of sort of chemistry. But if your teacher says you can't do something in a lab, just assume that it's because it's dangerous, right? Um, all right. Cool. So the answer to this question that most of you got was B. So I'm going to draw it out really quickly, just so if anybody was a bit confused about um, uh, why it's B, you'll be able to have a look. So if we, if I draw a butanol, so just a straight trained butanol, uh, and then I put uh, a methyl group on the second carbon um, and an oxygen uh, and an OH group on the second carbon, then I, of course, have um, an oxygen attached to a carbon that is bonded to three other carbons. And that's the definition of our tertiary alcohol. So um, we have uh, we have our two methyl butantuol. So well done, everybody who got that. Um, cool. Uh, so the next question says something. The next question says, uh, chloroethane reacts with aqueous potassium hydroxide solution, um, ethanol as the organic, producing ethanol as the organic product. Um, the hydroxide ion is acting as what? What is the hydroxide ion doing? Do you memorize how to draw all of these or can you work them out? 
Um, if you so if it's hard for you to visualize them just from the words, then I would just draw them every time. And the more often you draw them, the more sort of automatic it will be that you'll be able to see them in your head. Um, but until then, I would just draw them. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys are all beautifully correct. It's a it's a nuclear file. So someone tell me what the definition of a nuclear file is. So somebody else is going to tell me what is what is a nuclear file. Yeah, it's an electron paired donor. Um, and what is it about a hydroxide that um, allows it to uh, donate electrons? So why is a hydroxide ion a good? Yeah, so it has, it's charged, right? Has a negative charge, so that the the, lo, the the pair of electrons in the in that formal charge um, are all ready to donate themselves somewhere because it's sort of um, too too uh, electron too negative um, for stability. So yes, beautiful. Uh, the extra question you did at the start: Why wasn't it a nucleophilic reaction? Um, so, uh, do you mean the sort of as in why was it the substitution of the, why do you think it wasn't? So like it was, all that happened was that the hydrogen, a H plus ended up being substituted by a sodium. Um, so is the negative OH negative or partially negative? It's got a formal charge. Um, it's got a properly formal charge. Sodium Na plus, is positively charged people, um, a positively charged thing is not going to donate a pair of electrons, right? Can't be a nucleophile. Um, all right, moving forwards. So the next question we have says, ethane 1,2-diol reacts with warm acidified potassium dichromate. Um, a number of different organic products are formed. Um, draw the displayed formula of two of these organic products. So we're actually going to draw them all, but um, because there's more than two, but you guys grab some paper or like do it on a blank photo on your phone or something and do it with your finger. But have a go at drawing them. Um, I do suggest that you don't just sort of wait for me to draw them because uh, it's the practice that will do you well in your exams. And also you guys never have to apologize for asking a question or for not understanding something. That is exactly why we are doing this. Um, and I feel, it makes me feel so sad that like so many people have been taught that asking a question is wrong. That every time somebody asks me a question, they apologize. You don't have to ask her, you don't have to apologize. That's literally why I'm here. So um, no apologies necessary. Is this A-level? Yes, it is A-level. So I'm gonna give you guys a little bit more time to do this one. It doesn't waste time. You like, you can't learn without getting things wrong. Like even if you get them wrong in your head first and then only say the right one out loud, you will have at some point gotten something wrong uh, before you learn a piece of information, right? Um, because before you had the information, your answer to the question would be wrong. So like you literally have to get things wrong. Um, so yes, it, it does not waste my time. Yes, this is for A-level. Does this not, do they not seem like A-level questions? People seem confused today about whether this is A-level. So you can tell that lot swatch by, by the name of the alcohol.
Oh, you mean as in not AS level? No. So alcohols comes under the, is a first year topic. So this is first year A level topic. I'm going to give you like another 20 seconds um, to have a go at this. How do you draw? Okay, cool. So lots of you seem to be being thrown off by uh, the thing, the dial. So ethane, one, two dial. Dial just means two alcohol groups on one molecule. That's all that means. Um, so I'm going to draw the dial up top here just so we have it. So it's ethane. So there are two carbons and then it's one, two dial. So on each carbon, you have um, an OH group. That's all that means. So this is ethane, one, two dial. Uh, and we're reacting with acidified potassium dichromate. Um, and so as you, lots of you guys have mentioned, acidified potassium dichromate is, um, is, is an oxidizing agent. And because we have two terminal hydroxyl groups, i.e. this is a primary alcohol on both ends, there are two possible products um, for each end of this um, molecule, right? So when you react with acidified potassium dichromate, you can either get an aldehyde for a primary alcohol or it can further oxidize to a carboxylic acid. Um, but because this is a diol, because there are two alcohol groups, um, that means that we can sort of have all sorts of combinations for how oxidized the molecule gets. Right? Yeah, it's impossible to be a ketone. A ketone has to be for a secondary alcohol and ethane literally can't be a secondary alcohol because there's two, only two carbons. So whichever carbon the alcohol group is on, um, the, it's, it's at the end. So it's got to be primary. Uh, so how would you classify this type of alcohol with two hydroxyl groups or more? It's a diol. And if there were three, it would be a triol. Um, so still, still a normal alcohol. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna draw all of our options. So first option, only one of the groups oxidized a bit. So let's just say the one on the left, but it's symmetrical, so it doesn't really matter. So we could have just had the first, the, the um, alcohol group on the left oxidized uh, and the alcohol group on the right did nothing. So that's option one. Uh, option two, we could have had both oxidize to an aldehyde. So here's another option uh, that we could have we could have had for our, our oxidation. Um, option number three, we could have had one of them oxidize all the way to a carboxylic acid and the other one not oxidize at all. Um, so we could have had this. Option four, we could have had one of them oxidize all the way to a carboxylic acid and one of and the other one only um, oxidized to an aldehyde. And the last option, we could have had um, both oxidized fully to carboxylic acids. So like, there were loads of options in there and you only had to draw two of them. And re remember, this is a symmetrical molecule. So if you drew it the other way around, um, so if any of them flipped, that's also fine. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm getting lots of questions about, could I explain quickly secondary, uh, primary um, uh, thingies? Yes, I can. So I'm going to where do I have good space? I'm going to go back. I'm going to go over here and explain primary, secondary and tertiary alcohols because we have had people ask me about that um, quite a bit. So primary alcohol is an alcohol where the OH group is attached to a carbon that is only attached to one other carbon or, or just hydrogens. So this is my primary alcohol. Whoops, a secondary alcohol is an alcohol where the OH group is bonded to a carbon that is bonded to two other carbons. So this is my secondary alcohol. A tertiary alcohol is an alcohol where it's bonded to a carbon that is bonded to three other carbons. 
So that's the difference. That's your difference between primary, secondary and tertiary. And they matter a lot with these um, oxidation reactions because primary alcohols can oxidize all the way to a carboxylic acid because there's enough space on the carbons for that. Whereas a secondary alcohol can only oxidize to a ketone and a tertiary alcohol cannot oxidize at all. So that's why it's so important. Um, so scrolling up, Georgia, uh, would you classify something as primary, secondary or tertiary if there was more than one OH group? So if the OH group, so for example, the one we just looked at, this ethane one diol, one two diol can still be primary overall, right? Because both hydroxyl groups are primary. Um, but you can't, let's say you had one in the middle and one at the end, you could not then say that that alcohol was primary or secondary. You could say that one of the hydroxyl groups was primary and the other one was secondary, but like the overall molecule can't be described in that way anymore. Um, so scrolling up. Somebody asked me if I could name these. Yes, I can name them. So um, when you have two carboxylic acid groups, does anyone remember what that, how you name that? What is, how do we uh, describe two, two carboxylic acid groups? So I'm gonna sort of work from five downwards. Anybody remember? Dicarbox, dicarboxylic acid, technically. But what I was going um, for this is this one would be ethan, ethan dioic acid. So you just add on a dye like you do with um, an alcohol. So some of you are asking me what would take priority aldehyde or carboxylic acid. It would be your carboxylic acid. So your carboxylic acid always sort of, um, always, comes first so you can kind of think of it as things like some anything like fully oxidized um takes priority over things that are um less oxidized if that makes sense all right i'm gonna move on um so that we can you know, get on with things. I hope I haven't missed any questions, but there were quite a few in there. So I did my best. All right. So the next question says, alcohol such as methanol can be used as fuel. Write equations for the complete and incomplete combustion of methanol. Um, so you guys have a little bit time, a little bit of time to do that. Uh, I will give you a couple minutes to have a go at that first one and start thinking about the second one as well. Yeah, two aldehydes would be a dial. But you guys are absolutely not expected to name something with a carboxylic acid and an aldehyde in it. So don't worry about that one. So I did see somebody in there ask me why boiling points reduce in branched alcohols. So remember with branched alcohols, you have um, basically think of it like uh, how well plates would stack if they're flat, if all of them are flat compared to if they've got a bunch of stuff on them. So um, intermolecular forces really depend on how close the molecules can get to each other, right? So between those carbon chains, they go, those are going to be London forces slash Van der Waals slash instantaneous to induced between the, the chains, right? So if you've got a bunch of branching, the branches, they just get in the way and the molecules can't get as close together. So they can't, um, you can't, you can't um, have as, as strong uh, Van der Waals slash London forces. I hope that helps. Um, so how can you be sure of the products for incomplete combustion? You can't, you can just pick any of them basically. So more branches, lower boiling point. Yeah, exactly.
So there might not be less van der Waals. You want to say there are less, the van der Waals interactions are less strong, right? Just because they're sort of having to happen from a, a, a sort of larger distance. Um, there probably are less as well, but you want to say in your exam less strong. Um, Cool. I'm going to I'm going to get started on writing this. So what you should have been doing is balancing them. And I haven't seen many balanced formulas um, in there. So we're going to we're going to do that. We're going to do that. Um, all right. So we know that we're starting with methanol um, for both of them. So that's nice. So we're going to start with methanol, which is CH3OH. And that's for both. So we might as well do that. We know that, of course, if it's combustion, it's going to be in, alk in um, oxygen. And I'm going to leave a space there so that we can balance it nicely. And we also, lot, most of you got that the, the um, products for complete combustion are, of course, uh, carbon dioxide and water. So that was lovely. And for I did see some questions about incomplete, um, which were sort of like, how do you know which ones? So basically, you could have either just put carbon monoxide and water, or you could have included soot. It doesn't matter. Um, that, and that's because sort of like, it's, you can have incomplete combustion that produces carbon monoxide, or you can have incomplete combustion that produces both carbon monoxide and soot. So both are completely reasonable. If it doesn't state which one it's talking about, then you just pick one. Um, cool, so let's have a go at balancing then. So the complete combustion is a lot easier to balance. Uh, because you sort of, we don't have to think about there being maybe an extra carbon, maybe not an extra carbon. Um, can you just put H2O and C? Uh, no, because that would not sort of necessarily suggest that the oxygen reacted with the carbon, which is kind of what you want for uh, combustion. So I would, I'd be, I'd be a bit uh, iffy about that. Could incomplete have um, CO2 as well? I mean, like, it could if it was partially complete and partially incomplete. Um, but I wouldn't write that in your exam, just because it sort of uh, complicates things a bit for you. But I see what you mean. Like, technically, in real life, you could have some CO2 as well happening. Um, but just say that. Uh, okay, let's balance our first equation. So our carbons are fine. We can see that we've got one carbon in methanol, one carbon in CO2. So that one's cool. Um, we've got three uh, hydrogens in methanol and only two in water. So that is going to be a bit messy. We're going to need to sort out the um, methanol and the water, right? So if I, what, what could we possibly do with the CH3? Oh, sorry, there's four in methanol and two in water. So what could we do at the front of the water to sort of sort that out? Yeah, put a two in front of the, the um, H2O. Uh, so then we have, then all we do need to really look at is our oxygen. So, so far on in my reactants, I've got one oxygen in my methanol and one and two in my um, O2. And in my products, I've got two in my uh, carbon dioxide and two in my water. So I've got four on my right hand side and three on my left, which is not particularly useful. So I need one more um i need one more on the left so how do i sort of how could i do that sort of most simply yeah have 1.5 uh in front of my o2 thank you het patel so i'm going to put a three over two a 1.5 so i have one and a half oxygens one and a half diatomic o2s which means that that then becomes four and it's called we're balanced for our complete um Cool. So do you always need soot as a product for incomplete? No. No, no, no. No, you don't. And why does soot form an incomplete combustion? That's a really big question. Um, so I'm sure somebody's done research on that. Um, but sort of why reactions go the way that they do, you could sort of um, try to sort of draw a reaction mechanism for this. I've never seen a reaction mechanism for combustion. Um, but have a Google. Yeah, have a Google. Um, do you have to times the whole thing by two to get whole numbers? Uh, no, you can though. You can times everything by two to get whole numbers or you can just leave it like that. It doesn't matter. Uh, if it's insignificant, insufficient oxygen, wouldn't it be O not O2? No, because what you're talking about in terms of insufficient oxygen 
is the number of moles. It's still going to be diatomic oxygen. It's still going to be O2. Um, okay, so we're going to balance. Um, we're going to balance our incomplete now. Um, and what I'm going to suggest is we get rid of the soot because if we don't get rid of the soot, we have to balance the carbons and you don't have to put in soot for incomplete. So to make your life easier in your exam and, you know, get rid of the carbon. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get rid of it. It can be um, CO. All right. So let's please keep, um, let's just like, keep all the chat related to chemistry and then we won't have any misunderstandings. Uh, just keep it, keep it related to chemistry, please. Um, cool. So we have, now that I've gotten rid of my pesky soot, um, I have one carbon on my left, one carbon on my right. So that's lovely. I have again got four hydrogens on my left. So we can do the same thing for the right hand side, right? Just shove uh, two in front of the H2O. So that balances that nicely. And then we have three oxygens uh, on the left, one from the methanol, two from the O2. And we also now have three on the right. So it was like super useful <laughs> to get rid of that soot because now everything's so pretty and balanced and we don't have to do anything else. And I'm such a fan of making things easier. So um, there we go. We are, we are all nice and balanced. So the next part of the question says, uh, suggest what conditions might lead to incomplete combustion of methanol. And I've seen it mentioned in the chat, so I'm only going to uh, give you a second. Um, Freya, you tell me. Remember the, the the sort of definition of primary, secondary, and tertiary, and try and come up with uh, the answer yourself. Because if you have the definitions, you should be able to come up with it, right? You're not a fan of soot then. Uh, well, it, it depends in what circumstance. If it comes to having to balance the reaction horribly, um, then I'm not a fan of it. Where did the soot go? So uh, as I was saying, you don't have to include soot and the soot would have complicated the balancing. So I got rid of it. Uh, but yes, so lots of people saying, yeah, incomplete. So insufficient oxygen is, is, is the correct answer. Insufficient oxygen. Is this for AS or A-levels? This is AS, this is from first year. Um, you tend to get combustion stuff in the alkane section, but there's no reason why you can't get it in the uh, alcohol section, which is why I included the question. Um, can you say dirty yellow flame? I don't know what <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Um, uh, Jalaj, what? What do you mean? Um, what is NMR? NMR is nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. It's a year 13 topic. Um, so that was what I was asking at the beginning. So do we want to do it like we do these ones where we have questions or because there are um, so many year 12s around at the moment, do we want to do it as a lesson so the year 12s can start learning NMR? Uh, so that was a question. We have a poll on the YouTube, so feel free to respond to that poll. Um, so it's a new topic for year 12s. Uh, is that you saw it in a lesson blah, 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 blah. You, but you couldn't say it um, in any of these as an answer to any of these questions you might be able to say it for other things um, cool all right so insufficient oxygen is the only reason uh, only allowed reason for incomplete combustion lots of the things you guys are saying could lead to um, in insufficient oxygen, but those are causes of insufficient oxygen, not causes of the incomplete combustion. Um, the poll is on our, on our YouTube channel, I believe, or it's not up yet and it will come up later, but I thought it was up. Um, uh, okay, cool. Last part of this question. So in addition to its use as fuel, methanol could be used as a solvent and as a petrol additive to improve combustion. Say another large scale use of methanol so it's one mark. So give me some other uses of methanol. What else do we use that for? And if you say for drinking, I will worry greatly about your health. So yeah, not the alcohol industry, please. Please don't think you can drink methanol. You absolutely cannot drink methanol. 
It will kill you. And no, antifreeze is not uh, ethanol. Harbor Post disinfectant perfume. We're getting lots of different options here. One of them I, I'm sure you've definitely heard of. So you guys are, some of you are saying like really specific things that are sort of like an over, if you sort of said that thing as an overview of like its role, then you would, then it would be fine. Um, fractional distillation, methanol be synthesized in the harbor process, solvent, Polymers. Okay, so what you guys, lots of you guys are just sort of saying examples of the fact that methanol can be used as feedstock for chemical synthesis. So it can be used to make other stuff, right, essentially. Um, so that is sort of it, any of you that were saying sort of like stuff like um, you could make carboxylic acids or you could make aldehydes um, that you wouldn't have gotten a mark for that because it said a large scale use and those are not necessarily produced by that in large scale. So just saying feedstock for chemical synthesis would have gotten you the mark. Uh, is that the only mark on the mark scheme? No, there are a couple of others. Is NMR the first chapter of A2? No, it is not. But I had some year 13s request it, so we're going to do it anyway. Um, is antifreeze not accepted? No. Antifreeze is not on the mark scheme. So mostly antifreezes are things like um, monoethylene glycol or monopropylene glycol or just propylene glycol. Um, it's not a very common antifreeze. Can you say solvent? Can I give a brief explanation of what um, a feedstock is? A feedstock just basically means a really basic chemical that can be used to synthesize lots of other things. Um, can I read out the answers? I will get to the answers. I'm just trying to get you guys to, can you say a solvent? You know, it didn't say a solvent in the mark scheme. But if I were an examiner reading solvent, I would have accepted it personally because it is used as a solvent, um, but it did not say it in the mark scheme. So I'm, I'm surprised that nobody said biofuel. Um, have you guys never heard of, of uh, methanol used as a biofuel before? There's quite a few of you in here. So maybe I... Um, Oh, it says solvent in the question. Ha, huh. see, that's why. See, I, even I didn't read it properly. What's a petrol additive? It's just something you put in petrol to help it burn. So additive just means you add it in. A methanol can help petrol burn. What's a biofuel? So biofuel is a fuel that you uh, gain from biological means. So mostly things like methanol will be gained from like growing a bunch of corn and then fermenting it uh, to produce some methanol. And then you can use the methanol and burn it for fuel. Um, and people like biofuels because they're carbon neutral um, a lot of the time. So like the, the growing the plants to burn them for fuel takes in as much carbon dioxide as it gives out once you burn them. Um, so biofuel was an option. And the last option was specifically the manufacture of esters. Um, so those were the only three options. Cows produce it. Cows produce methane, not methanol. Um, doesn't the question say fuel in the question? No, it says an additive. Um, and if, if it's not the same, biofuel is not the same as a fuel. So specifically, you could synthesize methanol sort of in the normal hydrocarbon process, but a biofuel is a separate thing because it's sort of, um, it's a large scale use in a different industrial setting. So that is why it's different. Anyway, I'm gonna, gonna move on because 
been rambling about this one for a while. So this is probably going to be the last question we do. Um, so the question says, name and outline a mechanism for the reaction that occurs in process one. So this is process one. And we've got some kind of dibromo um, butane there reacting with sodium hydroxide. And then we have like a bromo uh, butanol in the product and sodium uh, bromide. So what kind of reaction is it? And then I want you guys to tell me what I'm drawing, exactly what the, spe the specific details for the mechanism that I'm gonna need to draw. Uh, like what is important that you include for the, for the reaction mechanism. And if you're saying things like dipoles, you need to tell me where the dipoles go. You can't just say dipoles. I want to know exactly what the mechanism looks like. So don't just say partial charges. Where do they go, people? So I'm going to I'm going to confirm that it is indeed nucleophilic substitution. So Namrata says, lone pair from the oxygen atom on the OH minus is donated to the carbocation. It's not a carbocation. You're thinking of when you have a tertiary alcohol, but that's not a bad um, shout. So lots of you are saying things, good things. So I'm going to start drawing and include the things that you're telling me to include. Right, lots of you said partial charges, delta positive on the carbon, which is correct. So I'm going to swap this around. Um, have a delta positive on my carbon and a delta negative on my bromine. Um, and then I'm going to have my OH minus, which you guys told me to draw. So well done. And a lone pair on that. And then Kang says there's an arrow from the um, carbon bromine making bromine ion as it leaves the group. So that's kind of true, but a bit wishy-washly said, but um, not bad. Uh, curly arrow from the OH minus from the lone pair to the electron deficient carbon. I like that. That is a good way of explaining it. So from the lone pair to the carbon, beautiful. Uh, and then from the um, carbon bromine bond, yeah, to the bromine, exactly. So be careful, it's not from the carbon to the bromine, it's from the bond to the bromine. So do not draw it the other way around. And then we're, we're done. Then we have our product, which in my opinion has a needlessly long chain <laughs> that I have to draw. Uh, what's the other product? Isn't that spelling of nucleophilic wrong? Not that I can see, but maybe it looks dodgy because I've written it badly. What, what's my other product that I would draw here? Would you have to write NA? No, sodium is a, um, is a spectator ion. Uh, and no, you don't need to draw the, the pair of electrons on the bromine um, in the products. You only need to draw those lone pairs if you're trying to show a pair of electrons moving. Um, and somebody said, why is it nucleophilic? It's nucleophilic because nucleophiles, as we said earlier, are um, electron pair donors. And we have this hydro here, hydroxide here that is, has a formal partial... <laughs> A formal negative charge. So that's that pair of electrons and it's donating it to the electron deficient carbon. So it's nucleophilic and it's a substitution because we've substituted a bromine for a hydroxide group. Do you write bromide or NABR? So you just write BR minus in the products because in the mechanism we do not include spectator ions and sodium is a spectator ion. Is NaOH the reagent? Yes, sodium hydroxide is the reagent. The hydroxide is the nucleophile. Would you get the mark if you put a pair of lone electrons on the bromine? You wouldn't get an extra mark, so but you wouldn't lose any, any marks either. Um, what's a reagent? A reagent is a reactant. It's something you put in a reaction that actually reacts. Um, do you need to draw an intermediate stage? There is no intermediate stage in this kind of reaction. There are two types of nucleophilic substitution, and this is the type that is one step. Um, there's another type that is two steps, but it doesn't happen in primary um, 
haloalkanes or primary alcohols. So this is a one step reaction. Cool, I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it here. We, we had one more question, but you guys can just do that at home. Um, can you draw the displayed formula? Yes, you can. What's the definition of a major and minor products? A major product is the product that you get the most of uh, in a reaction and the minor product is the product you get the least of uh, in a reaction. Um, would bromine ever form as Br2? Well, there's only one bromine on this molecule um, that's leaving. So no, you might get later on in the reaction at some point, some bromine might react with a, an electron deficient bromine, but this, that's not what's happening here. Uh, let's do the last question. We don't have time, I'm afraid. Um, I, I'm sorry. Uh, I always like question whether I should make these presentations like either slightly too long or um, slightly too short. And every time I like estimate, okay, maybe if we have time, you guys always complain. So I'm going to stop putting in the extra bit at the end because I always get like um, people complaining that we haven't finished. But really, I just wanted to make sure that I wouldn't go run too short. Um, can I go through its answers? So there's not really answers to this. Uh, I will tell you, what I will tell you is that it's a primary alcohol and that you use acidified potassium dichromate, but that's all I'm saying. Am I finished? <laughs> okay, lovelies. Um, as usual, uh, you're welcome, Frankie. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, so as usual, the sort of part of the reason we do the YouTube things, other than because we want to be able to do some free stuff, um, uh, blah, 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 is because we want you guys to know about our platform. So uh, you're welcome. Uh, so like if you already know about it and you, you're either already a subscriber or you know you don't want to subscribe, obviously you can just pop off. If you do want to know about it, then stay um, and I'll, I'll sort of show you our website and stuff. Um, but yes, if, if you aren't sticking around for that, uh, cause you've already seen it, then, um, it was lovely having you. Oh, and my lovely colleagues just dropped the link to the poll in the chat. So if you could sort of answer that for us about what we should do about the NMR topic, I would, um, really appreciate that. Okay, cool. So those of you who have not seen it or just like watching me ramble about our nice website, um, here is our website. Um, it's called Snap Revise, like the actual YouTube channel. And essentially what we've tried to do is make a website that has everything you could possibly need to do um, the science A-levels, essentially. Um, so what you would do is you would um, subscribe for a certain, a specific exam board uh, for a specific subject. So uh, we're chemistry here. So let's have a look at the LXL chemistry um, page. Uh, and what we have is like a bunch of videos um, for uh, different, all the different topics you have. So you would first do a diagnostic quiz and have a look at your um, strengths and weaknesses, which I'm going to skip because we don't need to know my strengths and weaknesses. That's that's cool. I don't I don't have any. Uh, hopefully, uh, no, not hopefully. We should all have them just in case anyone thought I was serious. I always worry about those guys. Anyway, rambling. Okay, it's because it's Thursday and I'm tired. I can't stop the ramble. Anyway, so here are our lovely, lovely videos, um, which you can like skip through to specific topics if you're like uh, cool with ionic bonds, but you want to know about dot and cross diagrams, stuff like that. Um, and then once you, you watch the videos and you do another quiz to see how you're doing, and then you can run through some exam questions, uh, which we sort of go through and explain beautifully. Do you have to pay for subscription? Yes. So we do the free stuff on YouTube. Um, and then the, the different, we have different sort of levels of subscriptions at different prices to sort of, um, if people want sort of more, uh, but of course we can't do everything for free because uh, this is our jobs and we have to, you know, eat and pay rent and stuff like that. So some, uh, the website is paid for, the YouTube stuff is free. Um, cool. So that's sort of the stuff for the first package. You get all of that lovely bits and bobs. Um, we also have exam packs. So the next sort of package up has like a bunch of exam questions that we've spent ages uh, producing because uh, mostly people run out of um, exam papers to do. And we wanted to sort of make stuff so that they could sort of have more of a go. So we've got those and then you can like have a go and then look at the solution and mark it yourself. Um, so that is, that is the, um, 
uh, the exam packs that we have. And there's like hundreds and hundreds of questions on there. And then like the last package we have is when you get me or like one of my colleagues, if it's for a different subject. Um, so we have sort of like the ultimate package has web classes. Um, so basically like this or like an actual class where I'm teaching you part of the syllabus or book club, um, which I'm running at the moment for chemistry. We're doing some quantum mechanics, which I love and miss uh, because it's not on the A-level syllabus. Um, and we also have things like personal statement writing workshops that we're running at the moment. Um, and so, to, so for example, on next Tuesday, we're doing infrared spectroscopy. Uh, on next Wednesday, we're doing condensation polymers for year 13, so stuff like that. So we've just got classes uh, and it's a bit like this, but on our platform instead of on YouTube. Um, and then you can sort of ask questions and things like that and learn all of the things. Um, and then we also have drop-in sessions where basically you just come in and ask me stuff that you're confused about. So that is that is our website. Uh, Ta-da, you're welcome, uh, Jalaj. Uh, I remembered, I wrote it down. Uh, you don't understand what I meant when I said there are two types of nucleophilic substitution. So um, the two types of nucleophilic substitution are only on one of the specifications. So if you haven't come across it, chances are it's not on your spec. Um, but if you do any chemistry in the future, you will learn that there are two types of nucleophilic substitution reaction mechanism, but don't worry about it, Toby. If you've not heard of it, it's probably not on your spec. Um, Cool. All right. So now I will give you um, the code. I, I remembered again. I think I'm going to keep remembering, although those possibly are famous last words. Um, quantum mechanics. Yes. Quantum mechanics is fun for some people, uh, not for others. Some people hate it. Some people love it. I love it because it's so weird. And I love I love all the weird. Uh, anyway, so just a reminder, if you are rubbish at remembering things like me, um, set reminders for these on YouTube. Um, you can do that on our on our channel page. And here is the code. The, the code. Um, I think the code works on checkout. So, you know, when you like click on like add to basket and then it's like enter a code that you have for discounts. That's that's what uh, you would do. Um, Oh, thank you, Judge, for updating me on, on what people were saying about what they want for NMR. Um, cool. All right. So I think, why are some topics for free? Um, so basically, we want to be able to give some people free stuff, uh, but like, obviously, it costs money to produce things. So it's with a, a something like this, it's like a balance between like, what can we afford to do for free uh, versus what do we have to be have like in, we have to have some kind of income coming in for people to have the time to make this stuff. So like, it's just about a balance. It's just us trying to balance it. Might sound weird, but to all the set provides. No, we just have uh, backdrops. Um, a backdrop so that you can't see, <laughs> see where I'm doing this. Uh, Cause obviously we're all on, on lockdown. So we all have to be at home, right? Um, so we do not want you to see inside our possibly very messy uh, <laughs> flats. So that is that is why everything is blue. Um, okay, I'm going to go uh, and do some lesson prep because, um, as I said before, I am forgetful and tired and uh, I'm behind on my lesson prep. So I'm going to go do that. You guys, I hope you guys do some work too or, you know, relax if it's sunny outside and, and things like that. Um, do I recommend year 12 coming for NMR? Yes, if um, if I do the lesson version, then for sure, I will just sort of do, sort of do an introduction to it. So yes, um, and it does seem like the lesson thing is gonna be the more popular thing. So let's, let's perhaps do that. Um, but yes, and that's not for sure, for sure. All right, yes, goodbye, Reng. <laughs> I will stop rambling now. Um, goodbye, lovely people. <laughs>